Hi, this is Stephen Van Camp and Lewis. It is Christmas Day, and uh, I, I'm actually filming this the day before, so it's actually the 24th, but I'm going to post this tomorrow on Christmas Day. So, first of all, Merry Christmas uh, to everybody out there. I hope uh, it's fun and that you're able to spend some time with your family, whether it's on Zoom or in person. Um, and I really appreciate you joining me today on, on this day of all days. Um, and uh, I hope you guys uh, all have a great New Year's and, and hopefully 2021 is much more, much less dramatic than this year and um, much more upbeat, hopefully, especially here in the United States. Um, but that said, uh, let's rotate out of doom and gloom and think about orchids. Uh, I have a, uh, a brassavola that is blooming here, and I want to talk to you a little bit about about the blooms, about its care, um, and uh, I might jump in a uh, Rincalalia as well. I've got one right, I think that's it right there that I can talk about and, and talk about why it's not a brassavola anymore. It actually hasn't been since 1918. Um, but anyway, without further ado, here is uh, a Brassavola. This is not Nadosa. This is actually Green Stars, which is Little Stars by Cordata. Um, well, let me show you this first, and then I'll, I'll dive a little bit more into this. So you see here it says... Um, uh, little stars by cordata so this would actually be um so little stars is nodosa by cordata so this is nodosa by cordato back onto cordata so it looks more like cordata uh, now i'm saying cordata a lot um even though this name is not spe the species is not called cordata anymore it's, it's subulifolia so wherever you see cordata replace it with uh, subulifolia and that is the correct name uh, in any case, uh, there's a really good chance that uh, you, as the viewer, are familiar with Brassavola nodosa. Uh, it looks a lot like this, maybe a little larger and uh, a little flatter. Um, and it's often called the Lady of the Night because Brassavola nodosa, like all Brassavolas, are fragrant at night. Um, and they're fragrant at night because they're moth pollinated. So if you ever see an orchid that uh, is white or very light colored and is fragrant at night, uh, there's a really good chance, I almost took down that Varsifixii, uh, there's a really good chance that it is pollinated at night by moths. And that's the case with this guy. So um, you may be familiar, like I said, you may be familiar with Nadosa. Um, now Subulifolia, is actually also similar to this. It's a little smaller. Uh, it typically has more blooms per stem, um, and they're they're rather than being sort of this white yellow color, they're uh, they're more green, much more green. And I got this one. You know, I've been looking for subulifolia for a while. Uh, I haven't been able to find one. Um, I'm sure if I was able to find one, you, you know, I, I'm probably I could probably find one online. They're, they're not that hard to find, but I've been hoping to find one just in person. In any case, it hasn't really worked out. So I got this one from a local nursery, uh, Miller's Tropicals, which is one of my favorite nurseries here in um, here in Central Texas. They're like ten minutes from my house, so um, and they have these these uh, sales two or it might be four times a year at this point. But in any case, where you can walk around and, and buy plants, and they have a lot of really great stock. And if you are um, Cattleyas. They have a really great selection, and uh, a lot of their breeding comes from H&R. So I love going over there as often as I can, and Todd and Susie are, are just great. Um, in, in any case, um, so I got this from them this summer, I think, and it, it's, as far as I can tell, it's the, it might be the second bloom, um, but, you know, either way, it looks, it's a really robust, healthy plant. It's, it's doing really nicely under my conditions. Um, and, you know, there's nothing particularly special about uh, Brassavola growing them. Um, you know, if you can grow Cattleyas, most of the Cattleyas, you can probably grow these guys. Um, you know, if you are an overwaterer, this one is not going to be good for you. They do like to dry out a little more quickly. So, so I just said you, if you grow Cattleyas, you can probably grow this one. 
uh, if you grow Kelly as well and you keep them a little on the drier side, that's, that's probably uh, good for this one uh, and, and its parents. They, they like to dry off fairly quickly. So as you can see, clay pot, large grade Orchiata bark, and um, during the summertime, like with all my, my whole collection, I hit them every day in the water. I hit them every day with water when it's hot outside, you know, like 95 degrees or higher. Um, and I have time or slow release fertilizer, which I keep in this little, little basket here, you can see. And then I've got some other um, slow release fertilizer pellets that you can see um, in the media. But it's great. It's, it's a it's an easy, relatively free flowering um, group of orchids. All of the Brassavolas are, I find, fairly easy. Uh, you know, in Hawaii, I used to grow uh, Cuculata and tuber, Tuberulata, I think. I probably just butchered that name. But it, it's all, all, all sort of same theme, these sort of moth-pollinated, whitish flowers uh, growing on fairly succulent leaves and... Um, high light they really like to have a lot of light they like to dry out fairly quickly but I mean, they're not cactus don't don't keep them too dry um and then of course they have these little stems that come out <clears throat> and you know i've got four flowers two four 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 flowers per stem is the most that i have on this plant um subulifolia will have more uh, nidosa will have this amount about this amount and um they're very hardy. It's, it's a very bulletproof, especially Nodosa and Subulifolia. They're pretty bulletproof. I remember when I was in Panama, um, down there, if, if you think about the map of Panama in your head, um, uh, there's a boot on the sort of southern end, a boot heel. Uh, so it, that's where they, they have the dry forest. And the dry forest, as you can imagine, gets very dry, but it, it does get wet in the summertime during the monsoon season. Um, and I was there in June, I believe, so the monsoons were just getting fired up, um, and, and the trees were just covered in nodosa. It was really cool to see. Um, but what was even more interesting was uh, seeing them right next to the ocean, with ocean wa big waves crashing and ocean spray going up into the trees. Uh, so, you know, those those plants that were closest to shore were, were definitely getting salt spray. Um, and it just goes to show you how tough uh, these particular plants are. And I don't think that ocean spray is what they need. It, that, that's absolutely not true. It just means that they can tolerate it. Uh, and there's, don't, please do not add salt to your plants, your brassavolas in your collection. Um, but anyway, it, it's very cool. Like I said, high light. They like high heat. Um, they want to dry off fairly quickly. Um, clay pot, orchiata bark, and that works pretty well for me. So my, my statistics tell me that about half of you watching right now are subscribed. Um, if you find these videos useful, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Uh, I'd love to have you here in, in, the, in the community and we can chat about orchids, um, you know, on YouTube, in the comments, or on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. All right, I wanna take this opportunity to talk about something that used to be called a Brassavola, but hasn't been a Brassavola for like a hundred years. Um, you know, this is a Rhynchalalia glauca. You may know it's more famous cousin, uh, Rhynchalalia digbiana, the big frilled lip. Um, but this glauca is, is uh, also amazingly beautiful flower. Uh, you know, I'll post a picture right now. So you can see this this exact one blooming for me, um, you know, a little bit less than a year ago. I actually chopped this one up and sent it a big piece to a friend in Puerto Rico. And you wouldn't know it. It's, it's just growing like crazy. And the reason I want to talk about this in this particular video is, is while Brassavola and Rhynchalalia have not been in the same genus since 1918, um, I, I do want to say that... Uh, their their growth conditions, their their care conditions are fairly similar. Um, so you can see this one is super big, and these guys don't really like to have the roots messed with. So I took the back half of the pot of its old pot, smashed it off, and then just dropped it in this bigger pot. And it's already outgrown this guy. Um, I think I, I think I grew it like this. I repotted it like a year ago. 
So all this, this new growth in front here is, is fairly new. Um, and you can see it's got new growths coming out here. It's actively growing new roots. Uh, and maybe most importantly, you can see, especially in this one with the backlit by the sun, it's spiking. So those are little um, bulbs, excuse me, little flowers uh, starting to poke their way up. And, you know, hopefully I'll have blooms, uh, I'll have a nice bloom video for you here in about, uh, let's say, two months. Uh, but uh, in any case, th these guys are from Central America, just like the, the Nodosa and, and Cordata that I, I showed you earlier. They're going to grow really hot, super, super bright. So if you're good at growing Cattleyas, I would keep this a little bit on the drier side, and I would also um, give it a little brighter light. So again, the, the Brassavola that I just showed you and this guy are really well adapted to drying quickly at the roots. And um, I, I give it, you know, <clears throat> slow release fertilizer. And if you, if I could tilt this over, I would show you there's some pellets in there for slow release fertilizer. Um, and uh, lots and lots of light. These guys are really well adapted to bright light. I don't know if you can see that up, the camera can pick it up. Oops, I'm making crunching sounds. Um, there's sort of, it looks like there's a, a white powder on these guys and that's, that's part of their um, adaptations. Uh, maybe you can see it there on the new growth. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so, you know, that, that sort of powdery substance helps to block sunlight. Uh, you can see the purple coloration, on the, especially on these sheaths here and, and some of the, the flowers. That means they're getting a good amount of growth. That means that the anthocyanins are, are coming through and doing their job as, as natural sunblock. Um, and this is just a monstrous plant. You know, this, I bought this. I think I also got this from the Miller's, um, the Miller's, yeah, I, I did get this from the Miller's maybe two or three years ago. And um, it's just, it really, really done nicely. It, it, I had some trouble blooming it for a couple years because I was putting it under lights in winter. And it doesn't work for me. I, I if I was going to do it again, I would put the lights right here underneath and just, just nuke them with light. Now that I get to nuke them with natural sunlight outside, um, they're blooming consistently for me. And, you know, like I, I showed you with this, this sheath here and, and this other one that you can see back here, those those buds are, are really working their way, th way through. So uh, it should be a really nice show. I like this particular variety. It's beautiful. It's got a really nice picotee in the lip. So it's got this sort of triangular uh, dark... Um, shape there on the lip that I find really attractive and it isn't always present on all clones but it isn't a lot. Uh, in any case it's a really rewarding species um, also pollinated by moths at night. So again it's a light colored flower very fragrant at night and so that those are sort of your cues to, to, to understand that this this is, is pollinated by moths at night. So I hope you all have a great Christmas and join me um, in the coming new year. I'm not sure if I'll probably, I'll probably make a video before then. Um, but if I don't see you or I don't talk to you online, I'll have a great new year. Hopefully your Christmas is going well. If you don't celebrate Christmas, then I hope your winter is going well. And I will talk to y'all later. See ya.